Yo, this entity has more red flags than gas station sushi. This entity has more red flags than a matador. This entity has more red flags than Amber Heard's bruise makeup kit in her purse. This entity has more red flags than Michael Vick owning five pit bulls. What up everybody? Today we are going to be reacting to another Paranormal Nightmare video called When Demons Attack. And you will see it over here. And I'll put the link down below. And yes, Mickey is on today. I've already had some paranormal like activity going on when I was doing my card pulls. That will be shown later in this video. So you know what? I was like, you know what? I definitely have to have Mickey on. And yeah, I'm pulling some clips here, um, and I'll put the timestamp roughly of where I pulled it so you guys can go back and watch the whole video, or at least at those points, for more context. But anyway, here we go. Well, I felt like this something was basically trying to get in my mouth. I, I could literally feel it trying to pry my mouth open. Um, so the entity trying to pry her mouth open? Oof. Um, okay. Red flag. <laughs> Red flag. Okay, so here's the deal. Here's the dealio of why this may happen. So negative entities, negative entities, evil entities, malevolent entities, what have you, will use this technique for one of three reasons. One, to try to possess a person. Two, try to scare a person. Or three, to impose harm on a person. Um, and to be honest, based off of past experiences and other cases, I've only have seen demonic entities do that. Am I saying this is a demonic entity? Based off of the criteria in which she's saying in her experiences, one could lead towards that direction. However, even though it's important to listen to what a client says based off of their experiences, if you're going into this work as a medium or demonologist or what have you, the thing is the client has their own perception based off of their fear response and the entity using that fear response to manipulate that person further, okay? So if the entity knows certain triggers that will terrify their target, they're gonna do it. If it's gonna make the entity look worse than it really is, it's gonna do it, whether it's demonic or not. So while I do listen to what the client says, I do kind of put that behind me and look for myself and not let their experiences determine or sway me into a certain direction of what I think the entity could be, okay? With that being said, I did go in and look to see what the heck entity is doing that. And upon watching the video, there's quite a few things going on. But in her experience right here, I do see two things. I see this M imp gremlin goblin looking thing that's like three to four feet tall. It's pretty small. And then I also see this gargoyle looking entity that looks like a low level demon. Now the imp thing, typically when I see imps like that, they help or they are the helpers of other demonic entities. So that's not good. <laughs> That's not good. And I do want to say this. I've actually had my own personal experiences, I would say about four, maybe even five, where a malevolent, non-human entity, I would say, um, I would say probably 
four out of five, maybe even the fifth one, were demonic entities. I always say demonic entities are rare, right? I do. It's true. And usually you don't come into contact with them unless you, or I shouldn't say you, but unless they are brought here, okay? Now, with that being said too, because I'm working on certain cases and certain cases that have, some of them have demonic attachments or hauntings and things. So I'm more likely to come across one than a normal stereotypical person. Okay. Okay. So I do have an experience that is on my chain. Actually, I think I've documented almost all of them. They're on my channel somewhere in a video. There's one where I did a collab with Chastity, aka Luminary Luna Beams, where we're, or I'm in North Carolina and, you know, we meet in person for the first time and I'm in a hotel and I have that experience. That was one of the first times an entity turned itself into smoke and went down my throat. Um, the other times was during like my peak haunting. Um, that's happened with the little imps. And there's quite a few times. But essentially, in every single instance, the entity turns itself into smoke. Um, I've had the red imps in my parents' house during peak haunting turn itself into red smoke, which, you know, the entities were red, so it makes sense, and they went down my throat. And the other times, you know, those entities were like black, so they turned into black smoke, went down my throat, and tried to possess me. Was not a fun time. And every single time, it felt like I drank like a gallon of acid and it was fucking horrible. And each time I wanted to fucking die. I'm not going to lie. However, I, because I was doing research and started to understand how these entities work, I realized that they do that on purpose uh, for the person to give up. If the person gives up and gives permission for the entity to take control and possess them, game over. And so for me, while it was a struggle, I did and I was able to manage to puke them up. Um, a lot of times on the astral realm. However, a lot of times too, I would say in every single time, after the experience, because my stomach still hurt, because I still had some of that residue energy in my body, my stomach still hurt, like in the physical, wide awake. And each time I've had to run to the bathroom and purge it all out. You could probably put two and two together and how, you know, what that all looked like. But it, it's terrible. And I don't wish that upon anyone. So if you're somebody who has experienced that, you know, having dreams where you're throwing up or even throwing up when you're not asleep and you're awake, that's good. You want to throw it up. That means you're purging out that energy. It's painful, yes, but that's how to get the energy out or going out the other end but um yeah so I've experienced that firsthand multiple times so I know exactly what's going on there and it's very um not gonna lie very concerning especially for her and her children but I started smelling like my house was on fire so I got up I'm checking my house at first, I'm looking, I'm, I even went outside, checking the back of the house, I thought my house was burning. The next morning when I got up, it was a foot, a footprint burned in the, in the floor. Here, to have that much energy to burn a hole in the shape of a footprint on the carpet? That is an example of, and I always say this wrong, an aport, airport, aport, I don't know, essentially, is when it creates an illusion or a physical manifestation of something. A lot of times people will see like swarms of bugs, um, the goo, um, and then in this example, the footprint, because it doesn't stay on the carpet, it then disappears after a while. The fact that she's having that kind of thing happen and she's smelling it, the energy, she's smelling the energy from that okay and that's that's very sus again and something that a typical earthbound spirit there's no way 
There's no way that a typical earthbound spirit could do that. No. Nope. Can earthbound spirits create smells? Yes. But the manifestation of illusions and things to stick around for a bit and that strength you know I I'm leaning towards demon here I meet the people over here and he tells me the history of the house and he said it was an older woman and her son that was living here her son I think was schizophrenic or something like that and he went in the people house next door uh, it was just a lady living there and she was in the shower and when she came out he was sitting at her kitchen table and she called the police they came he ran in the garage this is next door and they shot him and killed him in the garage he died she would come all hours of the night knocking on their door trying to get him to come over here then we have the son of the older woman may have been diagnosed with schizophrenia but this is what i see here in this specific instance the son was abused and because of the immense trauma it created some fractures in his mental state but even though he had mental health issues i think that the entity i shouldn't say i think i know the entity took full advantage of that and just and it made him look and seem schizophrenic Possession is very good at mimicking schizophrenia. And if you actually have schizophrenia, it's easier for an entity to hide within it. So you can have someone that's schizophrenic and possessed, or you can have one or the other. However, in this scenario, this person had a demonic attachment and was possessed. I see him in chains and the demons like walking him like a dog Ugh, not good not good and when the person died that demon stayed and that person that was attached with the chains is still there one thing i forgot to add here so the demonic entity orchestrated that schizophrenic person's death point blank no question about it it knew if it got him to go to her house she would call the police and the police would kill him it wanted that that was its plan because then in death that demonic entity has full control over that person so that's how the demon came into play for her and her family okay it's not like she did any witchcraft or did a Ouija board or anything. No, 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 no. This thing was in her house before she moved in. It's very unfortunate. And because she has immersed herself into that energy, it's becoming an attachment if it hasn't already. And it's playing on her traumas of losing her son, which is really fucked up, but it's true. And I started having problems with my son. I'm told that <sighs> he said he woke up when he woke up he was standing on the steps already he don't remember opening the attic or anything but he was standing there with his mouth wide open and then having her son like getting up doing things and not remembering and then like sitting at the top of the stairs with his mouth open the entity went inside his body because children are easier to manipulate, to possess, to attack, etc. You name it. But he was temporarily possessed. He needs a Reiki session. Well, they all need a Reiki session. I get nervous with children because, again, they're children. And you got to be careful because, you, A, you don't want to traumatize them. They're already going through something traumatic. And, and I... Losing their brother, that's a trauma in of itself. So the mother has the trauma of losing her son and the, and the children have the trauma of losing their sibling. Plus, you know, the mother has other traumas that we won't mention because they're private. But 
since we already know about it in the video, those are like the main traumas that this thing is attached to and feeding off of. And like I said, this demonic entity did not start as an attachment. It started as a haunting for this family. And as they are more immersed into that energy, the more it's seeing the traumas that they have and they're feeding off of it and terrorizing them and feeding off of that fear. It's not a good situation. One thing I also noticed is her haunting is very similar to mine. Holy macaroni. And just, and what I mean by that, I mean like the haunting style. So like the nightmares, the tapping, and it's like tapping on things that you know are taps. And it's specifically picking certain surface surfaces like um, glass. I hear it tapping on glass a lot in the video. Um, countertops, mirrors. It's... It used to... The, in my haunting, it would tap a lot on my chameleon um, setup. My what do you call it? Terrarium. And you know chameleons, they move really slow. And mine would just sit in one spot because of the light, because it was a heat lamp. And it would just sit there and I'd watch it, but then I would hear clank clank and I'd be like, mmm, that's weird, that's suspicious. And then I would hear the clink clink on something else that was glass in my um, room at the time. And the nightmares. <sighs> And that impending doom feeling, especially when you're trying to sleep, this thing tried to wear me down by making me so fucking tired that I just wanted to die. Like, the amount of fatigue that I had at this time was so bad. And that's what it's doing to her. It's trying to wear her down. But here's the thing. The great thing is, she's aware. And... That's amazing because she's aware, she's able to fight it and not give up. Most people aren't aware of this and tend to give up, hence, you know, how the possession thing happens. But she's aware. That's great. And when people are more aware, again, they can fight it. The low shadows that she keeps seeing, where she talks about it at five minutes and ten seconds, it's that imp. And I wouldn't be surprised if there's more than one imp, just at least in my experiences, typically they work in pairs or sometimes there's even more. Although in this house, I only saw one, but like I said, that doesn't necessarily mean anything. And again, there's four, four spirits and or entities here in this location. So 18 minutes, I pause the video and I start channeling because I wanted to see, like, more. It's hard to, like, when so much stuff's going on at one time, sometimes it's hard to focus. But you got the imp-looking thing. You got the demonic uh, gargoyle-looking thing. There's an older man there, like, in his 70s, white hair, balding on the top of his head, plaid, long sleeve shirt, and, like, I'm seeing brown pants. And then I see a man that appears to be around 30 to 40 years old. He's got light, ashy, brown, dirty, blonde hair, glasses with a thin frame, 5'8 to 5'10, like in height, and he's skinny. He's pale in complexion and he's white. And he feels like an earthbound spirit. And then I start getting chest pain right here, right center. And I also feel that directly on my back, like in the same spot, but on my back. And then I start feeling my upper arm on the same side throbbing. Did you hear Walker's fell? No, I didn't hear it. Dude, that is so loud. You're right, it's walking above us. The walking sound on the second floor in this moment, I think is the older man but the older man and the demonic entity kind of like exist in the same spot at the same time here. But here's the other thing. The demonic entity, I see it perched on the roof and it spends a lot of time on the roof. And I see it going like this, like a puppet. 
And it's, it's like telling the little imp thing to do whatever it wants it to do. Which could be like terrorizing the family, doing a lot of the paranormal activity. But the imp is doing a lot of the paranormal activity in the space. And side note, just because like a footstep doesn't sound super heavy. Because a lot of times when you hear things like that, you equate like heavy and loud sounds to like demonic things that's not necessarily always the case because many of them are very meticulous in how they control their energy but i will say it feels like the 70 year old man upstairs the demonic one kind of goes between the roof and the mother's bedroom but more so on the roof um i know on my notes i kind of say it differently but um just for the patrons, this is what I'm going with here. Yeah, so if the family hears anything on the roof, it's the demonic gargoyle looking thing. The thing that tripped the alarms or alarm upstairs is not the same thing they are talking to in the basement. So they're in the basement, but then they hear something trip the alarms upstairs. It's not the same thing. The earthy in the basement is very protective of the basement and kind of it's like his area he doesn't want anything in that space it kind of feels like the 70 year old guy i don't know which one's the schizophrenic one is he older i don't know that i was confused i'm just going based off of my perception and what i was seeing but the old guy's downstairs a lot of time i do feel like the younger guy is more the mother's attachment. He was drawn to her sadness and her grieving for her son. So her original attachment, again, was not the demonic one. It's that younger earthbound spirit. And he's very like, the best way to describe him is like a spirit spouse. And spirit spouses typically are more on the sexual side. It's not good. Um, they can be mistaken for, like, incubus and succubus. But they're not demonic. They're just really negative. And it feeds off her energy while the imp feeds off her energy while the other demonic thing is feeding off her energy. There's a lot of shit going on here. Are you the one setting our alarms off? I just picture this like creepy old man just like creeping around the house from room to room. Like maybe he's lost. Do you realize that you're no longer alive like the three of us? Am I a ghost? Yes, you're you, a ghost. What can you see? That's I like you. I like you. We like you too. We want to talk. Did somebody hurt you? And like I said before, the person with schizophrenia is still there and is the one on the spirit box here at 30 minutes and 15 seconds. At this moment, that's who's on the spirit box. And the demonic entity that was attached to him when he was alive is still tormenting him, making him relive the super traumatic events he had endured when he was alive. So that's fucked up. And this person was allegedly, allegedly abused. And again, that's what caused him to fracture and have certain traumas that the demonic entity is feeding off of. And that was providing a gateway for the entity to attach through. 
I also suspect that the actual origin of the entity came about from something else. It was brought here through another means because demons don't just appear for no reason. They have to be brought here. Spirit is showing me, like, the mother of this person did some sketch things. And either she or another family member was involved with dark practices. And... I mean, it could have been him, too. They could have both been involved. But I feel like it was more to do with the mother. She, I feel like she was involved in dark things. That brought this entity here. And because he's got the abuse, trauma stuff going on, it transferred to him. But nevertheless, that entity was attracted to him. Can you make that noise again for us, please? Sound like it's upstairs. Are you hearing it, Josh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then 3144, I started feeling burning on my shoulder. Rut row. And of course, you know, this thing can cause physical harm to a person. I wouldn't be surprised if she has bruises and scratches and whatnot on her body. And the fact that it has picked her up and moved her. No normal, typical earthbound spirit can do that. I'm sorry. It can't. I mean, if it's been dead for a long time, it's possible. But, but, the likelihood of it, it's not very likely. Yeah, you can touch one of us. Did I just run down the stairs? Are you coming towards us? Around 33 minutes, you hear like that running down the stairs. That's the imp running down the stairs. During my official channel, I did hear strange humming sounds in the living room area. So that's telling me that there's a warp or the energy grids are very worn down and there's a portal there. And I start feeling pressure on my upper back, right like where your neck meets your spine. Yeah, it's very heavy there. I think that's where the attachment is rooted. But to sum it up, the demonic entity there is a low-level demonic entity. It's not a devil. It's I feel like it can be kicked out. And the imp too. Um, the earthbound male that's like 70 years old, he needs to be crossed over. At this point, I realize that the 70-year-old man is actually the schizophrenic guy. When I first started watching the video, it was very confusing. I don't know why. I did watch it all the way through first without taking any notes just to get a feeling to see if I could pick up an overall impression of energy. And then I went back and started watching it again and that's when I got my timestamps and wrote my notes and all that stuff. But yeah, the 70 year old guy is a uh, the schizophrenic guy, durr. I should have been able to put two and two together, but, um, you know, this girl's naturally blonde. <laughs> and he can't just leave because he's stuck because of that demonic entity. He also is in a state of confusion, partially because of the entity, but also because of his mentality from when he was alive. There was a bunch of things contributing to the confusion too, plus his mental health, and he was older, and I suspect he might have some form of dementia situation going on, but it could, the entity could also be doing that as well. It could be fucking with his memory. 
there's a bunch of things, like I said, are going on. But the reason he... Most of the time, when you have mentally ill people that pass away, typically, normally, most of the time, they do pass into the light. It's not the... It's not their fault that they have mental illnesses, even if he did have schizophrenia or someone that has dementia, for example. Typically, they cross over. But in this scenario, it's the entity that's holding him there. And he's just, like, in this pattern of, like, wandering around. He can't leave. But the entity's feeding off of him. It's a very sad situation. It is possible for him to cross over, however, he needs some help. So, crossing him over would probably be the main priority, but it'll be a bitch to get past that entity to, to do that. And the younger guy that's attached to her specifically, he needs to go. I don't like him. He's worse than, I would say, the 70-year-old and maybe similar in terms of, like, harm to the demonic one. Not as strong, of course, but in terms of what it's doing to her, it needs to go. So here's my quick, semi-quick poll that I used my own deck for. All right, so you know what? I thought I would use my personal deck that I designed to throw out a few cards to see if I can validate my suspicions on this case here. So I suspect there's actually four entities total in this house. Um, two male earthbound spirits, one that's older in their 70s, and then one that's between like 30 and 40 years old. And then we have a demonic entity that kind of looks like a gargoyle. And then it's a little helper that looks like a little mini goblin that's like three to four feet tall. So I'm going to, you know, shuffle my deck. Do a little shuffle, shuffle, mix shuffle. And you guys get to see a little preview of this deck. Okay. There's 95 cards here. And it's dummy thick. It's hard to shuffle. It's kind of hard to shuffle. I have baby hands, so. so this card flipped out. Sabotage. That makes sense. You know, she talks about like accidents and car issues and stuff like that. Nor that, because two cards popped out. There we go. Incubus, succubus. Mm. And also with these cards, too, sometimes you can just take aspects from these cards. Sometimes they're not literal. Sometimes it's a, a quality of the entity. All right, hallucinations. That makes sense, though, with the schizophrenic one. There's a lot of stuff going on here. There's a lot of residual energy. There is a portal in the space. Whoa. That's two cards, so we don't count that. There we go. Paranoia. Now, let's move this over here. Paranoia. It's not that the person's paranoid, paranoid and making up the activity. No, 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 no. This card is more of um, the entities making her paranoid and scared. This one we already did. Incubus, succubus. I feel like um, even one of the men spirits and the demonic spirits um, can get very sexual and that's not good. But I don't think it's specifically an incubus, but I think it has those sexual tendencies. And then, like I said, the hallucinations, you know, seeing shadows, and also the entities, or entities, because there's multiple, um, can create illusions. 
to making it look worse than it really is. And the little goblin imp gremlin looking thing does this for sure, but also so does the demonic one. And, you know, I'm not the fuck. Dude, I just heard a tap on my dog's bowl. And he just went running. Yeah. Fucking weird. As I'm talking about this. <laughs> I don't know if you guys caught it on camera or not. He heard it. He was laying in his bed near the basement door. Hey, maybe we got this on camera, yeah? Oh, turn it this way. And I usually pick, well, I only go based on what feels right. All right, what's this one? You know, it's really fucking weird. Um, I was having this illusion or seeing it with my third eye of a bunch of fucking spiders hanging from my ceiling in my bedroom. And... I feel like this entity does that, too, with the illusions. It's giving um, infestation, but not really. What are they called? Airports? Or our ports? I can't think of the name. I, I think that's what it is. Or our port, airports? Or our ports? I don't fucking know. I never say that one right. But basically, that's when... An entity can manifest something that's not actually there, but it can appear very re real. And that's the spider entity. So I don't think there's an actual spider entity there. Whoa, that was too, too many. Oh, how many we got? We got five. And at least seven. Okay, there we go. What's this one? Oh, there it is. Infestation. Doesn't surprise me at all, actually. Alright, I want to know specifically the entity. What is the main big bad dark one? What is the main big bad dark one? Thank you. Trauma, as always. That's in my notes, too. Oh, my gosh. Pareidolia. Again, that kind of goes with the paranoia thing. Hallucinations occupy. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. What do we got? Empath. Yeah, she's probably empathic. Faux shizzle. Faux shizzle. My nizzle bizzle. Whoa. Hello there. It definitely plays on her um, empath energy. Anyway, if I were her, she needs some good Reiki sessions. She needs to work on healing her traumas. She needs to go to a grievance counselor. So, And I think her children also need to go to one and or some kind of therapy because losing a sibling is traumatic to any child. It wouldn't be a bad idea to do an exorcism on the one child, but I'm afraid that the exorcism would be more traumatic to the child. So, I feel as though while it would work and be helpful, there's other ways to do it that won't traumatize the kid further. And again, Reiki, again, will help. The house needs a cleansing. The house needs to be cleansed once a week, period. And I think just by doing that, 
and helping the children understand. Because if they're seeing it, they're probably traumatized by the haunting itself too. To help the children understand what's going on in a way that isn't going to scare them. But also show them how to protect themselves. I know many parents don't want to bring it up to their kids because they're afraid of scaring them. But there are ways that you can talk to your child about it. Because if they are seeing it, you don't want to be like, oh, that's not true. That's not there. It's just your imagination. That's gaslighting your child. And just going to further make things worse. So don't do that. But if you can think of a way to talk to your child to get onto their level, to ease them into it, I would recommend it. Each child is different. Some can handle it. Some can't handle it. Depending on their age, too. I feel like coming up with methods of protection, I wouldn't even explain to the child what it is. Just validating that what they are seeing is, like, a real. But ensuring them that there are angels and beings that will protect them if they ask for help. That will that would be more beneficial. So the conversation I would have would be like, Yeah, what you're seeing is real. However, there's no need to be afraid because... Archangel Michael will take care of it. All we have to do is ask for help and they'll be there and they'll take it out. If you're having a nightmare, ask for Archangel Michael or if you're someone who believes in Jesus. It can be Jesus. That's okay. And you would just have that conversation of when things get scary, you just call for your angel friends and boom, there they are. They'll help take care of the situation. If you're afraid... The children are going to be afraid because they're going to see your reaction and they're going to mimic that reaction. You don't want to show any signs of fear around your children. That's like Psych 101. Anyhow, to cleanse that space, I would use in this situation because there's a lot of shit going on. Copal, frankincense, myrrh. I do have incense that can be used that have all those things in it. Um, which, you know, if this person sees this video, I have no problem making them a batch of those incense and I will send them to them for free. I don't care. Like, I will send that to them. Um, holy oil, very important, okay? Put it on all your chakras. If you're having that feeling that someone's watching you when you're sleeping, put that holy oil on. They can't touch you. They can try, but they, they're not going to be very successful. You can get some black tourmaline, wear it. When you go to bed, put some under your mattress. Again, it kind of protects you from the top and the bottom. Because the entities will either go on top and try to fuck with you or underneath. When you do your cleansing in your space, make sure you go around your house and you seal all the entry points, all the windows, all the doors. Make sure, you know, you're in a ventilated area, lead it out the front door. I have a video, again, on that. Just, you know, watch it. I have a demonstration that I do in my house. So if you're confuzzled, you can watch it. So, I hope this video, I don't want to go too far into it because this video is a long ass video. But, yeah, I think I'm going to end it here. So, if you guys stick around this long, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see y'all soon. Peace out.